gentlemen, welcome to the Dome. As I already mentioned in my introduction, this is definitely the best stage at Dub Festival. From eSports to mindfulness, from Philips to Salesforce, the lineup is impressive. Now let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Josephine, I'm Marketing and Business Development Director at Dev Germany, and today my most important job is to make sure that you guys have a good time. So, are you having a good time? Yeah. Okay, that's already quite good, but you have to be a little bit more specific. So I'm going to give you a scale from one to three. One is, I'm totally annoyed, not in the mood, my neighbor stings, take me back to Shippo. Two is, yeah, it's okay, could be here, could be somewhere else, don't really care. Three years. I'm really happy to be here and I'm excited about the people, the party, and the lineup. So, are you ready? Okay. Who's super unhappy to be here? Then say the three words, take me back. Okay, that's good, that's good. Who's okay, but would we rather be at work today? Then say, okay. Okay. And if you are enjoying yourself at the one and only Deb Festival, give me a thumbs out and shout, I like! I like! Amazing. Didn't expect that to work at the beginning, so this is great. Cool. Okay, and since you guys have been so brutally honest with me, I will also share my mood with you. And to be really honest, when I started preparing for this day, I was at a one. I was so nervous. But then I found something which helped me relax. I found yoga. I'm probably the last person on earth to try yoga, and this is basically because I thought this is such a cliche thing to do. But now that I'm doing it, I really enjoy it. And uh, since I still feel a bit stressed, I was hoping you guys could help me get ready for the day. So I know we are like packed with people, but if you could just stand up for five seconds, that would be really amazing. Oh my god, I really did not expect that to be so crowded. <laughs> okay, let's give it a try and try not to punch your neighbor, okay? Okay, okay, okay. We, we're going to do it in a smaller way than I wanted to do it. But what we're going to do is we're going to try to breathe in and we're going to breathe out with like smaller circles to not punch the neighbor in the face. Okay, let's do it together. We breathe in and we breathe out. Amazing. One more time, we breathe in, and we breathe out. This is amazing. Thanks a lot for helping me. Okay. Um, okay, now that we are all more relaxed, let's uh, get on with some organizational topics. Uh, as you already heard, the program is divided into three different slots. Uh, into different slots, sorry, and um, we start with the first theme, which is immersive design. There are around 15 minute breaks between the slots, um, so please try to stay at one stage until we have a short break, if possible. Um, and one last remark, during our presentations, you can use Slido to uh, enter in some questions. Um, behind the stage, not behind, but rather next to the stage, um, these two lovely gentlemen, are monitoring your questions and then will hand them to me so I can ask them after each presentation. And while you're on your phone already, please remind to turn off the volume. Okay, so are we ready for our first speaker? Yeah. Cool. Steve Jobs once said, creativity is just connecting things. And I'm sure our next speaker agrees. He became a UX designer because he describes himself as being extremely chaotic, and he says that building structures helps him organize his life. Well, I'm not so sure about the chaotic part, but I think our next speaker is uh, super creative, highly energetic, and a cool person to hang out with. He is a specialist for design systems at Debt Amsterdam, and he will explain to us why we should all design as a god, not as a dictator. Please welcome, with a big round of applause, Menno! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Deb Festival. How are you all feeling? Good, 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 good. Okay, cool. I'm just sizing up the room. The room is smaller, but the crowd is bigger than expected, so that's nice. 
Um, my name is Menno Decker, and uh, I'm a UX designer here at Depth. And when I started out as a designer, I learned all the programs by heart. Sketch, Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, all the shortcuts I remembered from the top of my head. And I have no doubt that any designer here today in this room did exactly the same thing. Damn. At some point, I felt like a trained piano player at these programs. But then, in 2017, this happened. What you're looking at is Airbnb testing out their sketch to wireframe tool. And the idea is really simple. You draw something on a piece of paper, you put it underneath the camera, and what you get back is a fully coded template in return. My first thought when I first saw this was, Shit, there goes my job. <laughs> because what I can do really fast in 15 minutes, this machine does in 0.3 seconds. But then my next thought was, well, maybe, maybe they are right, because this is actually really smart. What they have done, they have taken their pattern library, their style guide, and all of their components, and combined it into one. And this enables them to quickly think, test, build, repeat, think, test, build, repeat. That's genius. So I started doing what they were doing, design systems. And a quick recap for those who don't know, a design system is a way of categorizing your digital service into components. You start with the most basic components, like a background, uh, border radius, some colors, and a typography. And from those basic components, you can make bigger components, like a button, which you then, again, can use in even bigger components, like a login page or a password forget page. The difference between this and a regular style guide is that instead of just defining how these components should look and behave, is that they become interconnected. Meaning, if you change them in one location, they change in all the others as well. OK, you get the point. I dove into design systems quite deep. Months went by without seeing my friends and family while I was reading up to atomic design and semantic UI. And I tried to convince all my colleagues to do the same thing. Well, all I got back in return was, do we actually need this? Luckily for me, I wasn't the only one who thought that the idea of designing this way is interesting. The companies you see behind me understand that if you want to innovate the products you make, you first need to innovate the way you make them. Switching back to 2019, and I hear the phrase, we need a design system being dropped like it's hot at the start of every project. And it makes sense, right, for designers to claim to want consistency, because consistency does two things. First and foremost, it helps the user to actually have a consistent user experience. Secondly, it helps us, the designer, to not constantly have to justify our own choices with clients and stakeholders. So, you know, we don't, we can actually get some work done. But still, we designers also have this tendency to change our own rules on the fly, like dictators of design, telling everyone that the rules we just came up with ourselves, eh, they don't apply here. We need a different approach here for in order to, to work, uh, or yeah, it feels off, so we need something else. Deviating from our own consistency, driving our teammates, especially developers, insane with our unpredictable approach, generating a lot of designs that are too far apart from the real thing. <laughs> but it's 2019 right now, and we have design systems, so no more design dictators, am I right? Well, it actually turns out we have two types of design dictators. The first one being the ones that design like it's 1999. Turns out that most digital designers don't actually design digitally. Don't get me wrong, they're sitting behind a computer, but that's pretty much it. 
Open any project file, and every design you'll see is its own unique one-off. It looks wonderful sitting there in its own location. The only downside is that the components that are frequently used, they're not interconnected. Meaning if you change them in one location, all the other designs are immediately outdated. Tools like Sketch, Figma, FrameRx, they gave us the means to work interconnected. Finally, the products, the tools we use are just as digital as the end products we make. Copy-pasting everything over and over again should be a thing of the past by now. But hey, I'm a curious guy, so I asked these 9099 designers, why? Why work like this? And the answer I got back in return was, well, design systems would constrain creativity in order to provide consistent product experiences. Just let me repeat that. Design systems would constrain creativity in order to provide consistent product experiences. They told me if you want something like that to work, you need a lot of time. Because first, you need to find clicker. First, you need to find every style and component before you can pour it into a framework where you make the basic components and the bigger components on top of that. And you guessed it, if you're not working for Google or Dropbox, ain't nobody got time for that. They much rather quickly iterate instead of having to think of everything up front. And if that means that some designs, or maybe all designs, are going to be outdated from time to time, so be it. On the other side of the spectrum, we have the digital design dictator. You know, people like me telling everyone that we can't do certain things because they're not coherent to the rule book. Creating a somewhat complex system that kind of limits creativity. And I mean, it limits creativity makes sense, right? If you always use the same structure, you're always gonna end up with the same result. And even if that is what you're looking for, the maintenance of such a system can be of extremely high effort. So there we are, everyone shouting, who want a design system, but no one bringing them to their fullest potential. All because the way they currently work is like a child on a swing, wanting after one push, more attention and an even bigger push. While what we actually want are systems that work like a child on a bike, after one good nudge, finding their own momentum. This made me a little sad. I don't like to design as a dictator. Neither does my team like me if I design like a dictator. Not when I design like it's 1999, and also not when I create a complex rule book that nobody gets. Instead of designing like a dictator, I want to design as a god, creating a design garden of Eden where everyone wants to live, where things can evolve in their own way. So I needed a different approach. Would it be possible to design like I want to design in the future, where things can evolve in their own way, but using the tools we have today? And this is the point when I started tinkering around with emergence. Emergence is when complex stuff comes into existence out of simpler stuff. Just, just take a pixel as an example. A pixel is just what it is, it's a square with a color. But when you have a lot of pixels, an image emerges. The image is emerging out of the simpler components. And this got me thinking, would it be possible to do the, to do the same thing with digital design? So whenever I create something, I won't use a design system where one thing needs to be built on top of the other, but I'll just use the basic components only. I'll only reference them. So Whenever I make something and I use an opacity, uh, rotation, uh, some colors, some lines, I'll only reference them and the bigger components, I'll let them emerge out of them. And what happens now is really cool. Because there are no rules how to use these basic components, they can range freely. They can go from 0% to 100%, meaning they become dynamic instead of static. So, 
when I start turning the knobs and dials of these basic components, I can start exploring emergent designs. Instead of having to think of what I want, I can just go out there and find what I want. You get all possible designs from the get-go. At any given point, you can just stop, watch, and see what your machine came up with. And it's not only about a lot of color combinations and crazy styles. It's more than that. If the contrast is too low, or it's not readable enough, or you need more accessibility, you just turn back the dial a little so you can find solutions to the problems you are trying to solve. The design you're seeing right now, it is not one design, but it's thousands of different designs. There are things in here that no one has ever thought of before, including myself. I'm just here to lay down the borders of this sandbox. The rest is for the design to sort itself out. What will survive to evolve in the next round? That's for me to decide. The cool thing about designing this way is that it's, of course, interconnected from the start, but maybe even better is you get truly unique results in return. We are heading to a future where we are going to work more with our machines instead of just controlling them. So when you are going to design as a god in the near future, just take your basic brand components and find your own godlike commandments. There will be a sweet spot between free exploration and strict non-allowing rules. It will be the ability to find emerging styles and patterns that help you solve the problems you are facing, being able to pin them down at any given point in the process. The tools for digital designers to start designing digitally, they are here. It is now up to us to become the gods that make design come to life. Thank you.